Hold on to your hats, guys. It's another mega update here on the farmstead in Thailand. Now, I'm doing a mega update this time round because there's so much to cover. Quite a lot of what I'm going to cover um, ideally needs in-depth videos, but I'm a little bit behind the drag curve. I've been, I've been so busy with my vegetables. So what I'm going to do is just do a, a quick overview of everything, uh, and um, that will be like a heads up of what I'm going to be doing in the near future. Okay, let's start with Toon's dad's JD, which is his final resting place. The two building boys have been very, very busy over the last few months. Well, I should say four months. And one of the jobs we got them to do was do another step out here on the side of Toon's dad's JD. So his ashes are in here. Uh, and then every now and again, Toon prays here and offers flowers and that sort of thing. We've also had a load of tiles left over from our previous house and this house build. So it's a bit of a mix and match, but rather than throw them away and just to tidy it, rather than it being just bare concrete, the guys tiled around the, the bottom two layers and just left this as smooth concrete here. So I've been heavily pruning all the, all the plants around here. They're gradually coming back. We had quite a few flowers on them, so uh, they, they do need another, another cut, really. I just didn't want to cut all the beautiful flowers off, but this is the last one on here. So once that's gone... I can really go to town on it. Last night was our first drop of rain. It only rained for about 10 or 15 minutes, but um, yeah, it was nice just to dampen down everything and wash everything down, all the dust that had been settled on, on all the leaves for so long. I've been even spraying our fruit trees just to get the dust off the leaves so they can photosynthesize. Here said that without stuttering. Right, let's carry on. The main entrance is all done and dusted, so we've got the sliding gate there, nice and wide. Although Eddie said it was too narrow. I think it's five meters. It's bloody Americans, isn't it? They're no good with these wide trucks that they've got. So uh, the idea is when time of finances allow, then we're gonna have, um, we're gonna run two chains over the main support beam there and have a nice um, planed piece of wood all the way across. And then a sign made up for Paul Pang Farm, Thailand. And uh, we just want people to know that we're 100% we're organic and no burn, all those sorts of things as well. So on the side of here, once this is all painted, we'll be, we'll be putting information on the two sides here. That'll be down to me to do the sign right in there. Uh, I had to quickly put our address very roughly yesterday. It was a visa renewal annual marriage visa renewal. So we had to take a photograph of two and I stand in either side of that and uh, with the house in the background there. Got some nice blossoms on this tree here. Okay, the next thing. This was planned, but not to this extent. But feast your eyes upon our angel house, and well, angel house, spirit house. So this is for the, for the spirit that stays on, on our land, taking care of the land. That's for the, the main angel. And uh, two offerings here. Now, it does look a bit fung thing, I tell you, but we weren't going to replace uh, that. But that's all that remains from the previous one. What had happened is the uh, previous guy that had done the build here for us, and just to just fill you in, this, this was the very first thing that we had built here on the farm. And it's just for good luck and for the angel to take care of us and to make sure everything was, was safe and sound, including Toon and I. So we had this done first, and the guy that built this uh, didn't reinforce um, in there, and it dropped. So it was leaving the blocks on the outside at the, the set height. Everything down there was all cracking up. So the two guys said, look, we need, we need to break all this up and then, you know, reinforce it with the, with the wire going across there. Before the guys started to break it up, the old house, which was positioned on here, it was sitting on four concrete legs, which the guy had built. The two guys that were doing the renovation work asked if the guy had put any metal in it, you know, going into the going into the floor. And I said, yeah, I did see it going in. So they said, oh, well, that's all right. So they started breaking it all up and the whole thing toppled over. It put about a bloody inch and a half of, of metal going into the to the floor, which obviously wasn't enough. So the whole thing came crashing down. 
the guy was like, "Oh, I, I, I'll, I'll rebuild it for you from scratch." And I said to two, "I said, look, well, look, it's, it's never been quite right because you never have just your angel house there. You know, you have one for your spirit as well. So let's do it right this time." So we did that, and the lady who came and did all the necessary bits and bobs for taking care of the spirit and the angel, she came back, and we offered a pig head and all that sort of thing. And uh, I still haven't drank the bottle of whiskey that uh, we, we prayed with as well. But yeah, very, very happy with that. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Let me just give you a close-up. These are yet to be finished. These are going to be tiled here. On here is going to be tiled. Toon's lovely idea of having little planters incorporated into here. And two in here. I've been in charge of uh, taking care of the soil. So I've, I've nicknamed it my rocket soil and uh, I'll be covering that when I do my vegetable update. I'll give you a quick overview today. Uh, yeah, I've gone mulch-tastic. Let's have a look. So there he is in there. And hopefully he's very happy. You'll often see in Thailand where people are on, quite obviously on hard times and yet they'll still have, have something like that and it's very, very important to them. Cashew nut trees, I have half pruned them back. I should have done it earlier, but this year, I mean last year was our first lot of, of nuts from it. We've got a lot coming this year, so I didn't want to cut any of them off. So again, that'll be pruned after that. Same with this one, loads on there. One of my favorite nut cashews. Uh, these two, they don't live in here, so don't give us any creep. It's just that they love to try and peel the skin off my legs when I'm walking around. So they're just in here at the moment and we're trying to get them up to uh, start eating fodder. So in here, there's an old napier grass crown in there and they started to eat that. We also give them the morning glory as well. So they're still on the bottle. Obviously their mum's out of the picture now. So uh, bottle feeding four times a day. And uh, yeah, they're, they're just getting onto the greens and, and the browns now. So what else have the guys been getting up to? Well, quite a lot of stuff now is, it, is, is done as far as the construction goes, almost. Uh, but we've been concentrating on the homestead side of things now and beautifying stuff. It's, it still takes a long, long time for us to populate things with plants. The main reason being is it, it is lack of soil. So you've probably seen in some of the previous videos, we've got these planters down there interspersed by a few pots we had from the village house. And we've got our desert roses doing very, very well. And I've started seedlings. Look what I've come up with. What an ingenious chap. I finally found a use for the old milk. I finally got all my ties over here. These are all the redundant ties. And I've got to fill them up and make a, an adventure playground for the small goats over here. Still a few goats to move in about another month. They're due to meet Mr. Bullseye for the first time. Right, let's have a look at some of the raised beds. So here, I'd like to introduce to you the start of our raised bed area. Now we have got a higher path on this side. The reason being before, you may remember, this all used to be boulders all the way down here. So rather than move them all again and break them up and use them for something else, I just said to the guys, just sort of like cap it off and uh, smooth it off on the side and leave that as a as another path. So this is now to be filled up. Pruned all this chaom, which uh, Toon really, really likes. I like it when it's fried up as a patty with uh, with eggs, uh, but it does make your wee stink. So all here is gonna be filled up, quite a lot to do there. So because of that path there, this, this is quite narrow, this area here, uh, but it's still in full production. So here I've got the, the Thai red shallots, um, we've got canar here, which is like a big mustard. 
under here uh, we've got a really big red onion just starting to come up under here just sowing some coriander it's a bit hit and miss with seeds in Thailand it's the second sowing and uh, I'm not sure whether that's going to come up so I might have to try again uh, we've got one type of pak bung here which is the morning glory uh, we've got a huge variety of garlic here they're just coming up through the through the straw Uh, another sort of salad grain there. Uh, we've got, well, I was going to call them spring onions, but they're bunching onions here. Uh, and then we've got a normal garlic, the small, it's like a sweeter garlic. It's quite nice, that one. On my to-do list, well, I've just started thinning these out, is all my aloe vera. I'm going to do a video on the aloe vera and how we're utilising it. It's an incredibly important plant for us here on the farm, as is the Bayesian grass which is down here. I know it looks a bit of a mess at the moment, but I've been clearing it out because over here, check it out. We've got another raised bed. Finally got all my garlic chives in. We've got a volunteer there, which is a chili plant. All sorts of bits and bobs growing. Got some dill in there. And all of this is Bayesian grass that I've been transplanting from over there. And um, I've covered Beijing grass before, but I will be doing a, one, a, a video telling you all the benefits of it. Uh, what else? So this is under construction at the moment. I'm doing all the, the bits and bobs for this. So we're, we're having a, I'll come up with a, a crazy paving idea out to there. Got two new crayfish tanks there. Well, they can double up as breeding tanks for the bullfrogs because the steps there, let's go up the steps, eh? Up here, or in here, just see there, we've got six big bullfrogs in here. Uh, they've just started to make a racket at night. So everything's a bit algae at the moment. We have put like a, a bit of a, a, a cover there. Um, but say now, now the rains have started to come. Next time we drain, we drain this out once a week. Uh, and then we haven't put a gutter on here purposely because it's going to fill fill all the tanks along here. I've still got to show you two more tanks in there. So when they start to um, produce tadpoles, then we'll be utilising these two tanks. Hang on a minute. Bad wife. So until we get the tadpoles, we're just doubling up here. The use of these creating more and more baby crayfish. Down here, ah, so over here will be developed. These are new as well, so we've had the two two pathways going into the toilets. Halfway down there is new, and the guys have sorted out. Let's pop the light on. Sorted out the flooring in there, so that's the uh, toilet and uh, also shower, ladies and gentlemen. So these are going to be planted up. This is going to be my seeding area. So I'm going to make some tables in there. I'm doing my propagation and everything in there, doing my cuttings. In here, I've got an earmarked for going down there. Hugo culture. This is going to carry on down here. So I'm just shaping, <laughs> shaping our... Well, this one helps you with your... Uh, your fella if he's not performing. I think I've covered that before. So I've pruned that back and the, and the Miyom as well. So we've got a nice path coming through here. The guys are doing one of the last projects we've got, which is a huge water tank. So double block work reinforced for that. Can have the tap here and overflow coming out here or if we need to drain it. So that, so that pipe there is going to be cut just a, like an inch below the top of there. And then I'm going to put a cover on there. I want to say a cover, it's, it's just really going to be a, a, a net to stop the mosquitoes getting in there and keep the sun off there. I know it looks a bit stick of the dump round here, but feast your eyes upon here. These are huge. So, two raised beds, and you can see why I'm having kittens now. We've, we've got caught stealing compost. I've really got my work cut out to get these filled up. So I've been uh, 
I've been trying to get topsoil from everywhere that's a little bit high all around these areas. There's quite a lot of mounds around there. So I've been shaving those off and throwing them in. I've got this not too bad now. Uh, and thank God we got goats. Uh, because if we had pigs or horses or cows or something like that, or, or it was just chickens and ducks, we couldn't use the manure until it had broken down enough. Your goat manure, same as rabbit manure, it's cold, classed as cold manure, you can use it straight on there. So some of it has already broken down. I've hosed this, so you can see some of it's... Let's get it in there. Some of it's nicely broken down. We've got a little bit of goat hair hair in there as well. Um, and the little bit of topsoil we've got is underneath that. So then I've been using my cardboard technique, which I first used with my garlic chives many moons ago. The chickens kindly dug up for me. Um, here I've just put a first lot of tomatoes in there. So we've got, well, we've got aubergines coming. Uh, I'm going to put some chilies in here. So it's just a race against time getting everything in. But I want to do it properly. Uh, as these get bigger, uh, then I'll be putting straw on here. So all these these leaves have been collected up from around the first goat house near our house. And then straw, rice straw will be going on there. Here, uh, well, we've left a path in between there and there. It's all moringa along there because they haven't had a single drop of rain. They've lost all their leaves now, but they're still alive and doing all right. So they're about five foot high now. Going to leave a couple of feet here. And then I'm going to have one long Hugel culture bed there. And then at least one more, maybe two smaller ones here. So just still still learning about Hugel culture. I want to try and get it right first time. But, uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So I've been collecting all the, the different types of timbers. There's Hugel culture. It's, um, you, you bury your wood. <laughs> that sounds good, doesn't it, eh? And here is going to be the location for my compost. So I don't want to be putting any more brown stuff in here. Uh, next layer is going to be the goat shit. Uh, and then all the higher synth is going to come on here. And then I'm going to do everything again. The reason I've put it here is because the majority of our vegetable growing is obviously going to be here and down between the palms down there. And also I want to take advantage of all the leaves that fall off the mango tree and of course the bamboo there so we get a lot nice nice bit of selenium into the to the compost that should work wonders been busy haven't we eh that's not it though we got more oh, i nearly i nearly forgot all this round here leading up to the hugel culture bed that's going to run along behind the the Miom tree here uh, it's going to be given the same treatment as here so underneath that you've got really poor conditions so you've got your manure uh then we've got this the small bit of vermicompost uh i'm trying to make it go as far as i can um mixed with a little bit of compost that we had and then i just levered it all down there so that's going to be continued all through there and then put the beijing grass in there so it's only been in about a month and it's it's, it's doing well yes uh last night i popped this in which is perked up already uh, and then today I've put this in so I only stopped a couple of hours ago um, but that'll take root easy just uh, I'll just show you it's already got already got roots in so just pop it in give it a squeeze and off you go got me a few aloe veras I've even put a couple of tomatoes in there and uh, I've transplanted my marigolds lovely crayfish tank Four girls in each tank, one boy. So we've got one, two, the one I just showed you there. And we've got the old cougar crayfish tank out there. Again, that's got four girls and one boy. Right, I want to show you something really cute. Excuse the dirty water, but turtles do poo. That's right, we've got turtles. There he is over there. Or she. Don't really know boy or girl but we've got three of them and uh, I caught one with the dog and uh, we're giving the other two one by Toon's nephew and one by one of the guys who works here so just in case they do get it on and uh, we haven't got three lesbians or, or, or three boys um, 
we've got a sexy time area here which will let them put their eggs in there but we haven't seen any action so far so at the moment we're just using it for oh there's one there all right fella or girl uh, we've just been putting morning glory and other bits bits and bobs in here there's two types of morning glory in here uh, and th this is a guy who we buy some of our vegetables off at the local market he lives not far from us in the local village and he gives us um i would say every every day or every other day a load of off cuts like uh, you know when you the cabbages get a little bit old and a bit raggy and um and a bit sad looking so we well today we got five big bags of the stuff so um sometimes we get stuff that's got roots on it so we just pop it in and uh, we've had spring onions we've got bunching onions uh, mint we were given that from one of the guys who works with us uh, this is like a celery i don't think it's taken but you can see it's the same plant over there and they've taken just fine it did i think what it is it depends how long they've been sweating in the bag until we pick it up um so we've got another type of morning glory there another type of morning glory there i think we've got three or four types at the moment now these are like a poor man's wicking bed okay so these containers at the bottom we've got gravel then i've got a thick layer of old leaves uh, and then we've got a little bit of soil compost uh, and then on top of that we've got the mulch so uh, we do need topping up the reason i haven't topped this up is because i thought we we're going to have a big storm so uh, once the rains come we'll, we'll let the water out we've got a, i'll just show you we've got an overflow here so when the water comes up it will go if it gets to there it will start going out and that that mark brings the water up to to there which is just about right for the turtles the turtles don't want to be in the water all the time so we're we're about three inches down at the moment and it's been quite cloudy the last few days so we haven't been able to pump water in here so once the rains come again we'll let all the water out here and the amount of rain that we get off this roof that just fills up in a couple of hours same as same with the frog tank so the idea is, even for even if I forget to water for a week, <laughs> which is highly likely if you're knowing me, um, then these are still all right. There's still a lot of moisture in the pot. Every now and again, I get the watering can and I just top water them. Uh, the amount of nutrients in there should be really good, I imagine. On to this one. We've got crabs and shrimp in here. Uh, it looks howling. It's because I've been in there moving the pots around. So uh, we've got... We've got three lilies at the back there. They're, st they're still very young. They had flowers when we first bought them a couple of weeks ago. Of course, they've, they've dried, died back now. So they're just, they're, I presume they're just settling in. That should look nice. We've got managed to get a little bit of green gold. Uh, and here we've got some edible plants that we've got from the wild. And we're just propagating them, basically. And then we'll keep on dividing them. These you don't eat. They're just for show to give everything a little bit more height. Um, these pots are, again, there. They're just cuttings from vegetables that we picked up from the guy in the village. I don't think I don't think that's taken. Uh, and I think just to round off around the back of the angel house, we've got these beds as well. So these are going to be for things mainly for like herbs and big root vegetables because the soil soil here is um, got some good depth in here. So I've just put some ginger in there. I've never grown ginger before. We'll see how that goes. Um, because it's around the angel house we'll put a few flowers in helps with the pollinators anyway so i'm going to be doing that with all the all the beds um, we've got a few things again these are just freebies that we found in a bag got a rogue corn come up um, we've got some purple chilies look lovely they don't really taste too much there's not much potency to them either so i don't know um, maybe once we've had them a while then, uh, then they'll pick up a bit so this is all rice straw that we picked up from down the road so it's nice to finally get some flowers in the place I haven't grown anything in here yet uh, all the way along the back end there we've got sweet potatoes a few more flowers at the front uh, and then at the back on the posts um, Toon's already got one growing quite well here it's the dragon fruit one of you did say why why don't you dry, um, grow some dragon fruit 
for your smoothies. Well, I do love dragon fruit, certainly when they've come out of the fridge. So, um, not sure what to do here. I know a lot of people put like a bicycle tie around now or something, and just to get them going over. We don't want one that's going all the way up there. And um, look at this one, all the way up there. And now it's now it's it's branching out. Then I don't know if I can shimmy up there to get the fruit, if it ever does fruit up there. But it's something to get plenty of cuttings off. So my idea is to do every single post along here and put three cuttings on each one. Uh, but I've got, to, I've got to make sort of like a little retaining wall around the bottom of each one and put some real soil in there. So we've just left enough gap here to walk along so we can get from both sides. The distance we've done it is... Two can stand that side, I can stand that side, and we can we can just about touch our hands in the middle. Either of us can come out here and and reach right across and do our stuff. I'm really, really happy with that. So what I've got planned for in here, uh, I haven't got enough cardboard to do it, but I've been using our old cement bags. Let me show I know it sounds exciting, doesn't it? But Look at the state here. This is what we're up against, guys. This is why I've gone for a lot of raised beds. Okay, over here. What a great channel, eh? Shows you a cement bag. This can be used as a mulch, um, weed suppressant, hold the moisture in. But we've got that. So what I've been doing is cutting straight across top and bottom uh, and then I can peel that out and then just get the hose out and just spray because you get a little bit of cement residue left on there and then I lay that out a couple of layers because we've had so much building work I think we've still got about 50 of these bags that's that's what's planned for the for the rest of my weed suppression so I'm going to be using a lot of them on the paths around here and um, because there's just a billion tons of leaves everywhere I'm just going to fill them up with that and then when it's rice season again, uh, I'll be able to get hold of a lot more of this and just keep mulching the sides. I think that's it. So you can see why I haven't done a video for four or five days. <laughs> I love it though. It's been it's been excellent. It really is good to 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 spend some time now growing things. Um, I've always enjoyed it. I think I started when I was about thirteen. My mum and dad let me have like a three meter square area um the back of our garden and uh, i used to grow me radish and spring onions and that sort of stuff and then um when i was about 20 I had my own allotment and i missed it i really have missed it i mean you think here we've got over 20 20 acres i know toon's mum uses some of it but and the goats use a lot of it but for us not to actually grow our own food has been it's been very very naughty but it is time consuming I really, really haven't had time to 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 do it as 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 I'd like. So now we've got more time on our hands because the goats are, uh, are like locked away during the daytime or locked out on pasture. I've got time to do all this now, and it's it's I'm buzzing. My little babies. Just want to quickly show you our gorilla gardening. If you've never heard of the phrase gorilla gardening, I, I first heard about it about 20 years ago. I thought it was brilliant. It's just people just living in cities and, and areas where, you know, maybe someone's got an apartment or a flat or something and they've got no garden. And uh, they, they still, they go out and they, they grow stuff in hedgerows and uh, waste ground and all that sort of thing. And then they go back and harvest it when they want. Oh, they, I, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're gorilla gardening around our lake. At the moment we're not doing it around the whole lake. Well, some some things that we're growing are going all the way around. They're things that the goats don't eat. But the goats aren't allowed around absolutely everywhere daytime unless we're with them. So let me show let me show you the area. So in the morning. We let them out the gates here. We shepherd them around there, or herd them, I suppose is grammatically correct, through there, close the gate. So they never go this way anymore. And we're growing stuff from here all the way around there 
<laughs> to there, and then there's another fencing gate <laughs> over there. So we're growing stuff along here. So we've got morning glory. We've got types of, uh, I think, celeriac. We've been putting napier grass in there as well, but we've got sunflowers coming up now. Uh, all sorts of herbs, trees. We've got flowering trees that you can eat uh, and some ornamental stuff as well. Oh, look at this goat. We've got a pink goat. Ha ha! What's your name? Is it? Say bye bye. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. Don't worry, we haven't forgotten about the fence pond over there with all the big fish in there. We're just, we're just unsure when to actually do it, guys. Um, it is a big, big job, and the rains are almost. Well, Tomb reckons the rains are going to come early this year. Wait and see, but I don't know. I don't know. So I'm just bottling it. Eddie's left his big seed net to, to get everything out, but I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit of a bum twitch moment, but we will, we will do it, I promise. All right, guys, take care, and we'll see you again soon.